Ash, one of my favorite mappers. I don't know. Uh, oh, there you Hi everyone, Kara. Good morning. Thanks for coming. Oops, where's the video? Ta-da! Hello. Thanks for coming. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Let us just uh, wait maybe for one or two minutes so I can admit more people and then I think we can start. Uh, thanks, Alison. <laughs> OMG, it's so nice to meet you all. You should do this more often. <laughs> Howdy. Yep, just a reminder to everyone to meet yourself. Congrats, Kiri. Congrats on submitting your work, defending your work. De yeah, defending your work. Congratulations. Thanks, Diane. Hi, Craig. Hi, Anna Leticia. What if my mom joins the Zoom? Who knows? Hey, Andrew. Hello, Ibrahim Kiora. Good morning. There's more people coming. Is your money not sure what to do with itself?
Mm, that's that's very nice, Ibrahim. You're working on a mapping project in FSM. Mm -mm. It's amazing. Okay, I think I should start now. Well, uh, every now and then I'll try to admit people. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming to this um, live map making sessions. First time I'm going to do it. Uh, but before I, I proceed with the steps, I would just like to say welcome all. And uh, you are fully welcome in this space. I acknowledge who you are and where you, where you come from. And I also want to mention that we want this space to be as inclusive and diverse and safe as possible. So let's make it uh, like that throughout the whole uh, duration of this, this, this tutorial. Also, uh, I'd like to do this in a, in a way that's more natural. Let's say I just woke up and then I want to make a map. So I don't have slides, but I have certain steps to show you. And then I'll also tell some stories along the way. Basically, um, this part of mapping an island in the Pacific is about using QGIS and uh, digital elevation models and Blender um, and OSM data to, to make a nice map of an island in the Pacific. Sorry, I just ate breakfast. And I'll, uh, the specific focus will be on uh, how to use Daniel Huffman's uh, relief shading method using Blender in, in, in achieving that island in the Pacific. So let's say you are, um, oh, there you go. Can everyone mute their microphones except for David? Yep, yes, please, thank you. So let's say you want to make a nice map for a brochure or for a report, or you just want to share something in social media. Uh, these are the use cases that I'm thinking in mind. I've been in love with topographic maps for the past um, decade. Daniel's here. Uh, thanks, Daniel, for setting this up. Uh, it's a shame that we won't meet this year because Daniel was supposed to speak at the New Zealand Topographic Conference. And this presentation is for you too, Daniel, because you taught, taught us how to do it. Okay. Uh, can other folks with their phones be forward to see? Okay. There you go. So, Again, this will be natural and it will just be a kind of, uh, I'll, I'll show it out as, as we go. I'm going to share my screen now. Ta -da. Okay. So, again, let's say I want to make a map of an island in the Pacific and my output is a static map. Uh, how does it look like at the end of the process? This is what I have in mind. So basically over the past few, last year for several months, I told myself, well, I feel bad about the PhD. So I will make a map in the morning, <laughs> first thing in the morning. And I just, I just went along and made uh, a lot of Pacific Island maps using Daniel's tutorial. But before that, actually the story goes deeper. Well, before that, I've been making maps in the Philippines. So my background is, um, I'm a Filipino, I was born in this island, Luzon, which is the largest. Amongst the 7,641 islands of the Philippines. And I've been working there in disaster and war zones as a humanitarian mapper. So to relax, I wanted to make nice maps <laughs> instead of seeing war. Um, so I started to do, to do this. And then later, I chanced upon Daniel's tutorial. I've, I've been following him for a while. And he shared a method of using Blender to create relief. And it's very nice. Mm. So last year, I think, what was it last year? December 2018, mm, I made this map, and which is an upgrade of this map about the Philippines. Um, 
about the 100 largest islands of the world. There's also another story behind this, which I will tell at the end of our session about uh, this particular poster. Okay, so let's now start with making a map of an island in the Pacific. Okay, so where can we get our data? First, um, we can get our land polygon data and other layers from OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is the free editable and open map of the world made by people like you. I love OpenStreetMap. And I'm also a volunteer and a supporter um, for, for many years. And here is a website where you can download different kinds of uh, data from OpenStreetMap. There are also other da uh, websites where you can do that, let's say Overpass, which merits another tutorial. Um, and there's a new one for, for the veteran cartographers here called Your Maps IO. It's more of a um, GUI based data downloader for OpenStreetMap. I'm just gonna show show it to you very quickly. And then we're going to proceed to the next step about the DEM. Okay. So this is it. And then with your maps, uh, which is a new, new project, you can use a GUI. So with this, I tried downloading uh, reefs yesterday. And it, you can export a GeoJSON with this. I'm just going to show you very quickly how it looks like when you're construct, constructing it. So this is it. And again, this merits another a separate tutorial about what, what do these values mean. But I just want to say OpenStreetMap is amazing and you can, you can download so many different types of data about Pacific Islands. Okay, now I'm going to show you another source of data this is for the DEMs. I like this site by, uh, what's his name, Derek Watkins. And basically the, the world is split into grids and you can select a tile and download a, a digital elevation model from the SRTM project by, by NASA and its partners. Okay, so let's say I've downloaded my land polygon data and I've downloaded my DM data. I can now proceed to QGIS and prepare my uh, files that file that I can use for shading later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just need to show you a few things first. So this is this is the an example of a DM for for those who are so new to to map in general, the digital elevation model is a representation of um, heights compared to a reference uh, model. And in this case, how it's visualized here in quantum GIS uh, is that when, when the area is lighter, it is more and more elevated. So for example, this is a volcano, it's more mountainous. And you can see this volcanic arc, which follows a fault zone, et cetera, et cetera. This is my home, this is the Philippines. It's on the Western Pacific. I miss it very much because <laughs> we can't go home due to the pandemic. Okay. Uh, before I proceed with the styling later, I just want to sh uh, share that uh, this is an important step for me that I have land polygons. That's why I mentioned earlier that uh, you, need, you need this file because in the final output, I want the the islands to look a bit more elevated above water. It's up to you if you want that. But for me, I want that extra uh, outline or shape. And then now it looks lighter. Okay, so here in QGIS, uh, you can mix and match different layers. You can also have uh, color schemes like, like this. Then, okay, this one is a duplicate of, of this one, uh, of the SRTM file, and I just colored it. And again, uh, it's up to you what, what you want to, um, which colors you want to play with. 
Uh, it's just that I, I just love this this color scheme that goes from dark green to light green. It goes very peachy and orange and then deep orange. This is inspired by those old cartographic maps. Basically, I've been looking at different color schemes for the past decade and this is my current favorite. For the for the long time map makers there, I think you know what I mean. You just you become obsessed with one cartographic element and just and just improve it all your life <laughs> until you get until you die. Okay. So what do I want to do next? Ah, I need to make my shaded relief uh, file in, in, in Blender. How do I do that? Okay, so we start with this. In QGIS, there's a separate um, value panel of call times zero. for layouts. Oops, someone's talking. Hmm. Does someone talk? Anyway, we can also have a Q&A later, friends, if you want. So I'll just go this. Uh, finish this in one straight. Great go. Okay, so this is the layout part of QGIS. And I'll export, I'll now export. Not that one. Oops, sorry. Now export this one. Okay, I changed. Mm, Islands of the Pacific. We are now working on the Visayas Islands. Okay, I'm going to export it to here, the Visayas DM. Actually, I already have an export, a red one that I can show you. And looks like this. But then, oops, but there's, there's a scale bar. So let's export a new one. Visayas DM. Do you want to replace it? Yes. Let's wait. Dimensions, good. Okay, should be ready in a few. Uh, for for everyone who, oh wow, this is nice. Someone's there's a new member of this chat called Atlas. Such an uh, interesting name, very heavy. Okay. Now, I think the DMs, the PNG is ready. There you go. I need to open Blender now. Where's Blender? Mm. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to Blender. Um, this process uh, is 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 from Daniel Huffman. If you want to learn the, the full process, even the, the small tweaks, please go to his site, something about maps.wordpress.com and the full tutorial is, is there. He's a author of this and I just followed it and <laughs> renamed the file, Mapmaker David secret sauce dot blend. This file uh, is, is in my website. Oops. Mm. There you go. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, I also made a, a pre-made, a pre-made project file on Blender in my website, mapmakerdavid.com. You scroll at the bottom, and then there's a button there where you can download this uh, dot blend mapmaker David's secret sauce. Okay. The key step now, because the the file is already made. Let let's say you follow Daniel's tutorial and the project is created. Um, I need to go to the node editor. <clears throat> and here, this is where I load the PNG, and then I run the software, and then you can output the, the relief file. Okay, open image. Let's look for Visayas. Visayas DM, that's it. But before that, I need to check if I have the right dimensions. Okay. Should be fast because it's not, 
it's not a it's not a big file. While this file is running, I just want to say this is very addicting. There are times when I just wait for 30 minutes and more watching the render. It's not healthy. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> You're not alone. I'm sure sometimes I just I just stare at the screen <laughs> like this waiting for for the render. Like right now, I'm I'm now staring. I should be talking, teaching you the other step. But sometimes it's nice. Oh, look at that! That's the mountain. And then imagine the relief. Okay, uh, what do I want to do next? Next, I need to prepare the um, the other layers that I will combine with this. Let's go back to QGIS and then the Blender file is ready in a few. Okay. Let's say I just want a um, a very simple map with no fuss map, with just the islands and the seas. Let's do that. I have a ready-made file for that. Da -da -da. Islands. Sias. Sias dot. Yeah, that's it. So this is a sample output and I'm gonna explain how the layers are combined. Now we're going to, to Photoshop, uh, which is one of my favorite image editing software. We're still waiting. Okay, so let's say you've exported that, you've exported that uh, relief image from Oops, just admit one more. From Blender. Hey. Come on. Just give me a minute. Okay, so this is it. Mm, right, I just need to move this a bit away. I need a bigger screen. <laughs> okay, so we're ready to go. Um, now, you can see here my in my screen, I have the layers on my right and some of the other uh, layers I prepared in advance. Let, let's, let's start with this. This is my current favorite color scheme. Where did I get it? I got it from OpenStreetMap. So I just picked the color from the sea and picked the color from the forest and increase the saturation by 100, I think. And then this is the, the relief layer. It's almost done. So I'm gonna show you how I arrived at this, this combination. Let's just wait. And then we're gonna put it there in the Photoshop file. Ta-da! Okay, now this file is done. What do I do next? Do next? I need to export it. Save as image. Mm. Here, Sias, Blender. I'm just gonna put version two. I think that's okay. Huh? What did I do? Anyway, this is the <laughs> this is a sample export. This is how it looks like, fresh off Blender. Let's put it here, and then uh, let's see how it reacts or it combines with these colors. Open with Photoshop. Ta-da! Okay. Now, I'll just duplicate this and add this to
to here. There you go. Uh, how do I make sure that the other colors pop? The more, most straightforward way to do that is to set it to multiply. But as you can see, it's too dark. Uh, some people love this, by the way. But for me, mm, it doesn't feel right. Okay. My current preference, and this can be challenged, is I make it lighter. And I also play with the, with the exposure, for example. Um, maybe 1.5. So it, it, it changes how it looks. You can see here it looks lighter now. Uh, even the, the shadows in between those, those valleys between the mountains, you can see a bit more now in those small spaces. Also, mm, we can try it now. There. So it's, it's lighter and you can improve it a bit further by increasing the brightness. Let's say 25. And then you multiply. Ta -da. For me, this, this looks a, a bit better than the first, in the first in instance where we just multiplied it and this is how it looks like given the resolution i am not sure where this comes from <laughs> maybe because when i exported it it had an outline but it's nice it kind of show these light blue lines kind of shows the reefs there are so many reefs in the philippines okay now uh i'll show another layer which i made Previously, which is this it's a colored layer, and let's combine it with that. So that's how it also looks like when you combine it with with that layer I previously showed in QGIS. Why is it like this? Huh? There you go. It's it's stronger now. So it's up to you to to mix and match. I don't have any hard and Hard rule about uh, which color combination is the best, etc. I have observed it really varies depending on the topography, depending on uh, even your audience, what they want. Uh, sometimes for me, it's how I feel <laughs> that day. Uh, there are days when I just want I just want black and white today, or days when hmm, I think I think I want a full full set of colors like right now. Okay, just gonna admit one more. Right. Um, and then you can now save it. I'm gonna stick with this um, and just save it as a JPEG, etc. for sharing. And then I proceed to the last part of this uh, live tutorial. Right, so let's go back to Mm, I'm lost. Here, this one, this map. Uh, the story behind this map is is from 2018, and this is where where I end this uh, sharing. Uh, last 20, December 2018, I said, "Okay, I've been thinking about making this poster for a long time. It was a Friday." And I told myself, I, I just sit down today, it's a Friday, and just finish it one straight. Um, since I, I, I learned how Daniel did it in terms of the shaded relief, I'll apply it to the, that, that project, 100 Largest Islands of the World. It sounded simple at first, which is, which is the usual case until you do it. So I started on a Friday, and then... And then I used the layer, the DM from SRTM again. Uh, I think I used SRTM 30 plus, one of the more improved ones. And then uh, I used another layer from Natural Earth, uh, which is very nice and just played with the saturation. As you can see here, this is from Natural Earth. And started putting the islands, rendering them one by one. Hey, hello from Newfoundland. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Number 16. 
Uh, and you, as you can see, there's so many islands from the Pacific here, which is a bonus. I learned that oh, we have so many islands in this top 100 list. Anyway, uh, so it sounded so straightforward. I'm going to prepare a DM and put the natural uh, earth layer and then play with the saturation and put island there. And then, and then I realized, well, you know, a, a lot of these islands, yeah, there you go. <laughs> People looking for Australia. I'm gonna. There's another. There's another story behind mm. why there's no Australia here. Anyway, so I thought, mm, uh, for example, look, look at here. Uh, how to name Borneo? It depends from where you are. If you're Malaysian or from Indonesia, and people are still fighting, or or New Guinea, and it's because a lot of the spaces in the world were colonized. So, for example, I saw uh, islands in Canada with names of royalty or other places where shall I name this Falkland Islands or the, the name from Argentina. And it took me a while to really think through that and look to the sources and I made some some calls. So for example, here in, in Aotearoa, which is the Maori name for New Zealand, I intentionally put the Maori name, Te Ika a Maui, which is the fish of Maui and Te Waiponamo, uh, the green stone. Mm. This is where I live now. I live here in Christchurch. Andrew's also here, my neighbor, uh, South Island. And I did that intentionally to highlight the indigenous names. Uh, and I made some calls and uh, apparently there were mistakes. So in the next, in the next uh, version of this, I'll try to, to think through this further. Yeah, shout out to Otatahi, Christchurch. Right, uh, about Australia. Every time I, someone shares this map, even if I don't do it, People keep looking for Australia, which is nice. Um, people love where, where they live, especially. But if you put Australia here, it will occupy maybe a third or one half of this poster. It was just not, not practical. And that debate never ends. If you go to the Reddit page where, where I first put this poster, people have been fighting endlessly. Last year, is Australia an island or a continent or, or both? It just never, never ends. So I, I left that conversation already. Okay, one last thing. So back to the, I'm going to finish the story now, back to the making of this map. So it was a Friday and all of these complications I made. I, I, um, I started with Greenland, etc., And then it became Saturday. Then it became Sunday and then Monday. And I'm still not done with the map. And you know, you have those moments where you're just obsessed with finishing the work. So I didn't go to uni that week. I told my supervisor, hey, I'm going to take, take a break. <laughs> but I, I was actually making this poster. And then uh, I, I ended up making it for a week. So you, you, can, you, can, you can imagine that usual situation when you were in uni, where you just you're, you were just in your room playing games or doing other stuff, and you're wearing a, a sweater and a hoodie, and you just came out of your room just to get food and then, or to take a bath, and then you, you go back. Uh, so that was the story behind behind this map. And thanks to all, to everyone who supported and, and bought this and shared this because I was able to actually save some research funds, which I used last year. And uh, the final thing I'd like to say, uh, well, two ones I'd like to say before I close this is first, uh, thank you to Daniel Hoffman. You are such a generous cartographer. Please follow at Pinaco Gravos in, on Twitter. Such a generous person. Um, you are a blessing to many map makers around the world. Also, uh, I would like also to say that, um, or ask you to follow us on social media. Uh, I'm Mapmaker David, whether you like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. I'm also part of a geospatial collective called the Ministry of Mapping. Um, it's a collective by Filipino uh, map makers, and we try to help each other during this pandemic. So we're doing projects related to COVID-19, especially in the Philippines. And our Twitter handle is at Mapping Ministry. Uh, lastly, uh, and this is, this is where this really ends. Uh, as a Pacific person, it's very nice to be able to make maps of your own sea of islands. And we have, we have a very popular saying in the Pacific that could be uh, 
use, I suppose. Uh, you can use it. And I, I love it very much. It's something like this. If you want to know where you're going, then remember where you came from. And that's where I end this tutorial. So thanks, thanks all. And thanks for coming. I hope uh, you got something. And please feel free to ask questions when, when you want. Let's continue the conversation later. Salamat po and see you next time.